Greetings, fellow mathematicians, and welcome back to the art of integration. We're going to tackle another integral here using an algebraic trick, but I'm not going to tell you what that trick is right from the beginning. Remember, the goal with this series, the art of integration, is to build your mathematical problem solving skills. So let's see if we can arrive at the trick that we're going to use here. Now this integral, like a lot of others, is tricky due to the square root. So we're going to think, let's try to do something to eliminate the square root here. Now we have the basic Pythagorean identity along with its two alternate versions. And notice we have a perfect square, cosine squared, and something that looks like one plus sine of x, except it's one minus sine squared. So let me go ahead and write that down, switching the sides. I'll write this as one minus sine squared equals cosine squared of x. All right, now how do we get a one plus sine of x from this? Well, notice that left side, that's a difference of squares. So we can factor that as one plus sine of x times one minus sine of x. And notice that part, at least if we put a square root around it, looks like our integral. Now, the other part here, we might be thinking the square root of one minus sine of x. We can't just put a factor of square root of one minus sine of x in there, but what we can do is multiply by one. So the trick that we're gonna use here is we're gonna think of one as the square root of one minus sine of x divided by the square root of one minus sine of x. So pretty basic trick that we've used in a lot of other problems, multiply by one, and that's how we're gonna think of one here. So let's go ahead and use that right from the beginning. All right, I'm gonna rewrite the function here over a denominator of one just to make the algebra a little bit easier. So I'll write that as square root of one plus sine of x over one. And now we're gonna multiply by one using that version, the square root of one minus sine of x divided by the square root of one minus sine of x. All right, and this is where, unlike some other problems we've solved with algebraic tricks, we actually need to be careful. What we're gonna be using here is a property of square roots where we take these two square roots, multiply them together as a single square root. So if you think back to algebra, the property that we're gonna use is the square root of a times b equals the square root of a times the square root of b. Now, this only works if all the quantities here are real numbers. In other words, both a and b should be non-negative. So what we have to be careful of here, since sine of x can take on negative values, we have to make sure before we bring these together that both the insides of the square roots are non-negative. So what we're going to need here is that one plus sine of x should be greater than zero. That's the first square root. And we also want one minus sine of x. We want that to be greater than zero as well. All right, and notice there we're making it strictly greater than, since we have a factor of square root of one minus sine of x in the denominator, we don't want that to equal zero. So we're gonna leave the equality off of those inequalities there. All right, notice this first one, I can bring the one to the other side and subtract one from each side to write this equivalently as sine of x is greater than negative one. And here I can just move the sine of x to the other side to get that. All right, and we can actually combine both of these together this equivalently just says we want sine of x to be greater than negative one, but less than positive one. 
All right, and if we think along a basic unit circle, we're gonna basically pick here sine of x, that corresponds to y, we're gonna pick basically the first and fourth quadrants. Notice there, your sine or y coordinates are gonna be greater than negative one, but less than positive one. We could also pick the other side, but due to having the square roots cancel out, with essentially working backwards to get cosine squared, we would also want cosine to be positive. So the angles here that we want, the angles for x should be between negative pi over two and pi over two. So as long as our value for x, that angle stays between negative pi over two and positive pi over two, all our algebraic tricks here involving square roots should be okay. All right, now that's the technical parts here. Let's go ahead and make use of that. Here, we're gonna multiply your two square roots And we have a difference of squares, one plus sine of x times one minus sine of x. We can write that as one minus sine squared of x. And that can cancel to cosine squared of x. So let's write this first as one minus sine squared of x over the square root of one minus sine of x. All right, now we can eliminate the square root there. We're gonna rewrite one minus sine squared as cosine squared. And we can finally achieve our goal. Now we can eliminate the square root. Our value for x, the angle, is staying between negative pi over two and pi over two. So here the numerator cancels to cosine of x and now we have an integral that we can apply a basic substitution to. So let's go ahead and try our obvious substitution. Let's go with t as 1 minus sine of x. And the derivative of that, the derivative of sine is cosine. Just be careful with the minus you have there. When you calculate dt, you're gonna get negative cosine of x times dx. And we'll just bring that factor of negative one to the other side and write that as negative dt equals cosine of x dx. All right, so if we go ahead and rewrite our integral in x, we can simplify it now as an integral in t. What we should get, just be careful here, we have a negative cosine of x dx, that's gonna be negative dt, and we're gonna get one over the square root of t. So let me write this as negative one over square root of t dt, and that we can easily rewrite as a power. We can rewrite that one over square root of t as t to the negative one half. So we'll keep the negative there and then times t to the negative one half. And that is really simple to integrate, just the basic power rule. We have the negative there. We're gonna add one to that power to get positive one half. So we divide by that new power, positive a half, we get t to the positive one half. And since we're dividing by a fraction here, that can flip, and we just need to back substitute what we chose for t, which was one minus sine of x. So if we go ahead and flip and then substitute, we should get negative two, and then t to the one half, we can rewrite that as the square root of one minus sine of x. And there we have our antiderivative, the value for our integral with a creative algebraic trick, multiplying by one, 
why we thought of that, again, was from our knowledge of algebra and basic trig identities. Hopefully you can start to see how you can build off of your existing knowledge to come up with your own algebraic tricks. Hope you enjoyed the video here in our series, The Art of Integration. If you're learning a lot, support the channel, like and subscribe.